Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to the market update video for the week of March 25th, 2024. So far, this week has been jam packed. Now, earnings are non existent at this point, seeing that the quarter essentially ended as of last Friday. However, we did have a few points of notice when it came to PCE inflation, as well as a surprise Powell speaking on Friday, March 29th. Starting with the first point, guys, we got PCE. Now, I did cover this on yesterday's live stream. However, I am going to cover it right here. When it came to the PCE month over month, we got the previous being 0.4, expectation of 0.4, and it came in at 0.3, so under what they were expecting. Normal PCE year over year was 2.4, expectation of 2.5, and it came in at 2.5. And lastly, when it comes to the core PCE month over month, we got 0.5 for the previous reading, they were expecting 0.3 and it came in at 0.3 and for the year over year one 2.9 for the previous 2.8 for the expectation and 2.8 for the actual and on top of this powell also came out talking and well while i did cover this on the live stream here is a quick synopsis of what he essentially said and this article pretty much sums it up pc inflation data is quote in line with what we want to see feds jerome powell friday's core pce report running 2.8 percent year over year in february was quote pretty much in line with our expectations it's good to see something coming in line with expectations said federal reserve chair jerome powell during an interview the san francisco feds macroeconomics and monetary policy conference on friday today's report was quote more or less in line with what we want to see he added noting that he still wants to see more quote good inflation data growth is still strong that's pretty much something that he mainly said and the fed will be careful about its decision strong growth means central bank doesn't need to be in a hurry he said the problem with this is people are essentially banking on the fact that he will cut rates three times this year but when it came to this whole entire speech well i did cover it guys make sure to check out the live stream about maybe like 30 minutes in basically he pretty much just said inflation is coming down. We got the economy strong and that most likely they're going to get rate cuts this year. Now, obviously, that did happen on Good Friday, so we did not get the effects on the market itself. However, on the five day, the S&P 500 is up 0.64%. Now, while as I said that earnings are essentially over, here are the earnings for April 1st, right before Q1 earnings begin to be released in the next couple days. On Monday, we got companies like Nanox, we got PVH, we got New York City REIT, etc., etc. However, guys, there really isn't much of anything here. On Tuesday, we got Paychex as the main notable one. On Wednesday, we got BlackBerry and Levi's. On Thursday, we got Cura, we got Kong. Conagera, I don't even know mo most of these, honestly. And on Friday, we got Byrna and Greenbrier companies. So again, nothing of these earnings scream. We have to cover it. So I think we'll just cover your guys' recommendations for the next upcoming days. Moving forward, we can see here the S&P 500 heat map. And this is a surprise because, well, tech on the five of the day anyways, like on the week, tech is actually a little bit down over here. We can see that in the technology sector, worst performer was none other than the company Dayforce Inc. losing 6.6%. And the best performer, it is the company First Solar Inc. gaining 10.56%. But take a look at this, guys. The chips are actually starting to go in the red. I know NVIDIA actually fell on the week a measly 1.18%. So that's a long way to go, though. The communication sector was very, very much in the green, all except for just a few companies. Worst performer, it is none other than Meta, otherwise known as Facebook. Book, losing 4.37% and the best performer it is the company Disney gaining 4.85% nice recovery after being down I believe sub $80 a few weeks ago to now $122.36 the consumer defensives was also very much in the green as you guys can see over here worst performer though was the company Mandalay's International losing 3.06% and the best performer by the looks of it it is none other than the company McCormick and company gaining 10.55%. The healthcare sector is also very much in the green. We can see here that the worst performer this whole entire week was none other than the company Biotechnic Corp losing 2.68%. But even then, you can see that the ones that were red weren't red by too much. You got companies like Waters Corp losing 2.33 and Biogen losing 2.32. Overall, though, the best performer, it is none other than the company Merck, gaining an astounding 
7.74%. The financial sector is definitely going to be under a microscope in the next upcoming week, seeing that we do have <laughs> bank earnings. I believe the 12, right? I believe it's April 12 when the bank earnings start. And we're going to get JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, and City on the same day, and then Bank of America. Nonetheless, though, worst performer in this whole entire sector was the company Visa, losing 3.89%. And the best performer, it is the company Allstate, gaining 6.68%. The consumer cyclicals, it is once again in the green. However, there are two companies here that brought this thing down a little bit. We got the worst performer being Lululemon, losing an astounding 18.42%, as well as Nike, though, 6.78%. Best performer, though, in this whole entire sector was the company Domino's Pizza, gaining exactly 9%. Looking now into the industrials, kind of a mixed sector over here. Honestly, this is by far the most 50-50 out of all of them that we have seen so far. Worst performer, it is none other than UPS, losing 4.31%. And the best performer, ironically enough, is in the exact same, since in the exact same industry, we got FedEx, gaining 9.4%. The real estate sector is actually a little bit in the green. However, there were some red here with not really a lot of losses, but still a few of them in the red. Worst performer, it is none other than the company Host Hotels and Resorts losing 2.22%. And the best performer, it is the company Health Peak Properties gaining 5.22%. And now we get into the greenest sector that we have seen so far. The utility sector is all in the green. There's no losses here. So if we just take a look at the worst performer out of the uh, out of all the green ones, I guess you could say, or the one that least gained. And that is none other than the company Edison International gaining only 0.8%. And the best performer, it is the company company AES Corporation gaining 13.77% and just like the utility sector is in the green so is energy which I don't know about y'all guys but uh yeah gas prices here are are doing something all right we can see here that only two of them lost we got the company Valero losing 0.17% and the worst performer being Baker Hughes losing 0.77% but the best performer though it is the company EQT gaining 7.89% on the week and lastly when it comes into the basic materials we got over here only four of them losing we got the company's Linde Lind PLC losing 0.42 we got VMC losing 0.97 we got fmc losing 1.86 and the worst performer it is cf industries holdings losing 2.85 percent and the best performer it is the company albemarle alb i never know how to say this name gaining 5.51 percent all in all though this pretty much concludes this video we're not going to make a really long video we're not going to have the debate seeing that it's easter just wanted to give you guys a quick update on what happened this past week and well what's coming next guys it is essentially q1 earnings so we're going to see a lot of stuff unveiled seeing that now that a lot of stuff has happened with the ending of the bank term lending program that's finished we have you know I guess the narrative of rate cuts are still there for June it's going to be interesting to see how companies actually performed in Q1 so that pretty much does it for this video make sure to like subscribe comment it really does help her with the algorithm on YouTube as well as rumble make sure to check us out live Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and of course follow us on X where we post the videos when they come out or at least we try to anyways and also any other news that may come up so thank you so much for watching peace out and we will see you all next time.